The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Sweaty and pissed, sweaty and pissed, menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. Hello, sweaty and pissed listeners. Uh, Welcome to a special edition that we're starting to do. Um... On the off weeks, uh, Leanne and I do our podcast uh, recordings every other week. And on the off weeks, I will be answering some listener questions for you. We get lots of questions on our Facebook page, and um, I try my best to answer them on on Facebook. But I thought also that there are other people who might want to know the answer to that question as well. So I thought I'd share some questions from listeners because they're very good questions and and we've gotten some really good feedback and information from our listeners too. So uh, one of the questions we had uh, was from Robin and she asked why some prescribers are resistant to prescribing testosterone for women. Apparently she asked her provider if um, she could have a testosterone replacement of some sort. And uh, the provider said that he or she does not do that. So uh, I wanted to explain a little bit about why that might be happening. And I want to first start by saying that we have a lot of testosterone uh, replacement options for men that are manufactured by pharmaceutical companies. And um, that has been around for a very long time. And it, they are all these options are bioidentical testosterone, which uh, bioidentical means that the um, the molecule is identical to the hormone that you pr- produce in your body. So uh, they have had bioidentical testosterone replacement for men for many many years, and there are many forms uh, for men, including injectable testosterone. Uh, gels that you apply topically, patches uh, that you apply to the skin. We have some newer forms of testosterone, a a new product called Ziosted, which is also an injectable, but it's an auto injector. Uh, So nobody has to fill a syringe and put a needle on it and self-inject into the, the muscle, which is where we usually do the injection for for men. And this is a real easy auto injector that goes into the subcutaneous tissue, which is the fatty tissue right below the skin. Um, So that's a brand new option for them. Uh, We also have a brand new option uh, of an oral testosterone for men, and that's called Jatenza. So Jatenza is J-A-T-E-N-Z-A. And that's a capsule uh, with a starting milligram dose of 237 milligrams that you take twice a day. And we have dosing below that, and we have dosing up to 396 milligrams twice a day. Um, And the spelling for Ziosted, just for your information, is X-Y-O-S-T-E-D. Yes, the names for medications become more and more tricky uh, as we go trying to find new meds, uh, new ma- names for meds. So, um, so we have a lot of options for men that are manufactured. And so prescribers feel quite comfortable prescribing these medications because there are clear guidelines on the dosing. They can get it, the patient can get it at the regular pharmacy. Uh, there's really not a lot of guesswork other than, you know, you're just following how the patient's doing on it and checking some lab work. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so the second piece of this puzzle is that testosterone is a controlled substance. And um, we have scheduled, uh, controlled schedule of medicines that um, have a addictive or abuse potential. And, uh, if you aren't aware of that schedule, that DEA um, has a schedule of medications that is one through five. Schedule one 
is includes things like heroin, marijuana, methamphetamine, um, and it has is considered um, are, are they are considered meds that um, have no accepted accepted medical use. So that basically they're street drugs. So that's schedule one. Schedule two is are things like hydrocodone and oxycodone that have high abuse potential. Schedule three include testosterone, codeine, and um, things like ketamine. And those have low to moderate abuse potential. And then schedule five, four, excuse me, are benzodiazepines like Xanax, Ativan, uh, Clonopin, and uh, Ambien and Tramadol. Ambien is sleep medicine and Tramadol a pain medicine. And then schedule five are things like um, Lamotol, which is for diarrhea, and Lyrica, which is for, um, uh, for pain syndromes like fibromyalgia. So just the framework for this, testosterone is a schedule three medication. So some providers are not comfortable writing controlled substances um, because of the abuse potential. So that can be a barrier for some prescribers for sure. The second big barrier is that we have no bioidentical testosterone that is manufactured by a pharmaceutical company for women. We have a medication called Estratest, which is a combination of um, what we call esterified estrogens and methyl testosterone. So it's not a bioidentical testosterone. It um, um, has a methyl arm on it, it's methyl testosterone. And the esterified estrogens are um, basically a mix of a bunch of different estrogens. So it's, um, it's real easy to get some estrogen dominance, which I'll, I can talk about in another uh, podcast, but estrogen dominance where we have um, too much estrogen and not enough progesterone because there's no progesterone in this capsule. So that's the only thing we have that's manufactured. Uh, so it's not... A, uh, bioidentical uh, testosterone, and it's not by itself. So in order to get testosterone for women, we have to have it compounded. And when we compound testosterone, there are quite a few options. We can have it compounded in a testosterone cream that you can apply in rotating sites like inner arm, abdomen, inner Thighs on a daily basis. Uh, sometimes uh, we will use testosterone cream and have people just apply it daily to the labia in a small amount, and that can help with sex drive as well as uh, improve testosterone levels. Um, you can put testosterone in an oral capsule uh, because it passes through the liver. Uh, with what we call a first pass through the liver, it sort of chews up some of the testosterone. So we have to use it higher doses typically than we use with the cream. Uh, and it, like I said, it does have that first pass through the liver. So we can also use vaginal testosterone where we have the cream inserted vaginally. And that can be really helpful not only for systemic blood levels, but uh, also helps with libido and helps with vaginal dryness. So it sort of depends on what the, you know, what symptoms that the person is having in terms of what method you use, and also what method is um, most likely uh, to be used on a regular basis. Sometimes people aren't comfortable with um, applying creams. Sometimes they're not comfortable with inserting vaginal cream. So you really, as a provider, have to find out what they're most likely to use on a regular basis for best benefit. Um, some things that testosterone helps with, in case you're wondering, do I have low testosterone? Um, of course, that can be measured from a blood test, but uh, testosterone helps us with spatial and analytical thinking, decision-making, sense of self-confidence, self-assurance, physical stamina, muscle mass, bone mass, sex drive. So it really um, plays 
a, a big role in terms of our mood and clear thinking and our energy. Um, a lot of women who are business people, especially, you know, maybe have a, a high managerial role and need a lot of um, quick decision making skills. Uh, sometimes those abilities wane as we lose our testosterone. So um, not that we don't need quick decision making skills in the home, but um, it, it, it does help with clearer thinking and, and better and faster decision making. So if you um, think that you are missing some of those pieces, testosterone might be uh, an option for you. And if you don't have a provider who is comfortable with that, with, um, with prescribing testosterone for you. Uh, there, I'm sure there are GYN uh, providers in your area who do this. I know there are many in, in Knoxville who are comfortable prescribing compounded testosterone for women. And I think it's become more so over the years since I've started uh, doing compounded hormones. It's really improved over the years. So, um, so if you're, if, if your, your provider won't do this for you and you feel like you want to consider that option, uh, it, again, it might be helpful to talk to, uh, your local compounding pharmacists and find out who is prescribing those kinds of medicines, uh, in the area. So if you are interested in, um, in, learning more about testosterone, I will try to put together all this information and put it on our website so that you can have maybe some of the names of the male testosterone options in case you're interested for um, your male loved one or um, and what kind of um, compounding options there are for testosterone uh, for women. And I think that will we'll wrap that up then. So if you have any other questions, you can shoot them on Facebook. Um, I will try, like I said, I will try to put a little um, uh, outline of what we talked about today on the website so that you can refer to it at sweatyandpiss.com. Um, I want to thank Boris Wenzel, our producer and composer of our theme music uh, for uh, producing this today. And um, I hope you all are staying well and being safe and we will talk to you next week with Leanne sweaty and pissed sweaty and pissed menopause makes me sweaty and pissed